What happens when you combine the best player in a game with the smartest player in a game? Or, to make things easier to picture, have you ever wondered what a character would be like if they had Kirito's skills and Shiro's tactics and game knowledge? Well, apparently the Chinese have, and I guess after a few failed attempts at making a popular anime, they decided to take a shot at the ever so popular game genre. And in doing so, they crafted what is pretty much the god of gaming. And I'm not even joking, one of his nicknames is literally God. Seriously, check the wiki. But, I mean, why not have the best of both worlds and create a lasting impression on the community, right? And that's exactly what they've done with Tencent Animation's newest production, The King's Avatar. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, great, another gaming anime where the main character lacks any form of weakness. Are we just going to be watching another Kirito or Ein Zalgun shit all over everyone? Where's the challenge that comes from playing the game? Well, that's not entirely the purpose of the show, and the sense of struggle doesn't necessarily come from the challenges faced in the game, but more so the challenges faced outside. And that's because there's an element here that's never been seen before in any anime, or at least any anime that I know of, and that's the addition of competitive esports. And I don't mean the bland that's 1v1 to determine who's better at the game type of competitive, or even the once a year million dollar tournament. I mean the addition of everything that encompasses the world of esports, the organizations, the teams, the contracts, the fandom, and most importantly, the game that's become a worldwide phenomenon. We get to see the world through the eyes of a professional video game player and the people around him. So no, this isn't your typical MMORPG anime. It's not SAO, ALO, GGO, or Elder Tale, nor is it trying to be. This is something new, something different, and maybe even the start of a new trend in anime. This is an anime on what gaming and professional gaming is like in the real world, with mouse, keyboard, monitor, player, and all. And if you've ever dreamt of being an esports player, or tried to go pro in any video game for that matter, whether it be League of Legends, Overwatch, CSGO, or whatever, then I assure you, you will find a deeper appreciation for this anime. So the game that we're given this time is called Glory, which at its core is an MMORPG similar to that of World of Warcraft. Except there's that added esports element that I mentioned earlier. Organizations pay players to participate in a competitive league against other organizations' teams in popular events that are televised across the globe. Sound familiar yet? But how does an MMORPG become a competitive esport? Well, the league consists of three matches, a 1v1, a 3v3, and a 5v5, and whoever wins two of the three wins the entire matchup. And players are limited to play on the character accounts that they've created and leveled up in the World of Glory through raids, dungeons, and quests. Now the main character that I've spoken so highly of is dubbed the Battle God, and that's because of the number of titles that he's won over the past years on his professional team. However, he's forced into retirement by the organization that he plays for and is stripped of his account. On this same day, the game Glory is launching its 10th server expansion, so our main character decides to bring smurfing to a whole new level and create a new character to climb back to the top of the Glory ladder. Some of you might not understand this analogy, but it's pretty much if Faker got kicked off of SKT, lost his name and all the titles with it, and then had to make a whole new name for himself from the beginning. At first glance, the Rise to Fame plotline seems kind of generic, but once again it's that additional esports pro league element that gives the story a bit more depth. Much of the first few episodes are spent fleshing out the mechanics of the game and establishing the community that revolves around it. But we quickly learn that being a member of a pro team requires much more than just the skill that comes with being good at the game. And being a pro means being a public figure in the eye of the community, so your actions have a significant impact on the people who support you. Which pretty much means that you can't rage like a little girl through your mic when you're losing because your actions have consequences. I figure that with the increased popularity of esports in China and Korea that this is very similar to how the competitive scene actually is, since it's much more prominent there. Which would explain how they're able to so accurately portray certain elements that only people who have been gaming for years would understand. Not to mention that Tencent, the producers of the show, own League of Legends. Anyway, for an MMORPG this has to be the most fleshed out game that I've ever seen portrayed in an anime. The classes are distinguished early on, bosses are categorized and act in a manner that is suitable to an MMORPG, skills are identified as they are used, crafting is emphasized as the best way to create gear and weapons, loot is fought over, clear times are competed for, guilds compete to be the first ones to complete areas, and they even go as far as to talk about player APMs, which in case you didn't know, are actions per minute. For anyone that's played any MMORPG, it's an anime that finally does the game type some justice. Now let's talk about Yi Zhu, our main character. Once the player known as One Autumn Leaf, another player known as Lord Grimm. 
He uses a classes class, which is basically a jack-of-all-trades type where you can use certain skills from different classes depending on the weapon that you're holding. His weapon of choice is also an umbrella. Yeah, he crafted an umbrella that can turn into a minigun, a spear, or a sword whenever he chooses. But playing as a classes character is often seen as a rookie mistake because it's not quite meta in the pro scene. And as I'm sure that you already know, every game is pretty much slave to its meta. And if you stray too far away from it, everyone and their mother will let you know that you're not playing the game right. But it's the way that Mr. Grimm uses his characters in battle that makes this show's in-game action scene so fun to watch. Normally with these types of anime, it's either the main character is super overpowered or he's super smart. Really, you'll find that one does both, and if you do, it's usually backed up by very little information. But in this show, there's a heavy emphasis on game knowledge. And this was one of the aspects that appealed to me the most when I was watching because it resonated with me a lot. That's because I play Overwatch. A lot of Overwatch. I even managed to get myself to top 500 on console. I also watch a fair bit of esports, and I realized over time that game knowledge is just as important, if not more important, than having the skills that deem a player to be good, especially in a team game. So seeing that Yiju is aware of this and is capable of using his game knowledge of 10 years to teach any noob how to become a top tier player is something refreshing. This guy would literally join a random party, beat a high skill cap boss with them, and then leave. Obviously there's more to it than that, but I don't really want to spoil anything. So what I'm trying to get at is, his skills aren't baseless. They're backed by significant game knowledge, and unlike Sword Art Online, many of his accomplishments aren't typically summed up to a steaming hot pile of bullshit. As for the anime itself, listening to it in Chinese for the first episode or so was a little bit weird, but you get accustomed to it so don't let that turn you off from watching. The action scenes do get a little generic at some points with recycled movements and actions, but that may be because the same skill was used so for consistency reasons they just use the same skill animation. The visuals of this anime are its strong points, the CGI is much better than its Japanese counterparts, and it's mainly used to animate background environments and some in-game aspects. But it's the way that they merge the CG with the animation as to make it not so noticeable that I must give credit to. My only issue so far is that the lack of development as to his reasoning into why he's starting over. But I'm only 5 episodes in so that may change as I watch more. Apparently there's around 1700 chapters of source material, and the first 3 episodes of the show only covered the first 50 chapters, which is probably a feat in itself. But with only 12 episodes total, it's highly unlikely that we'll see any conclusive end to any story that we've started. But if you're interested in seeing something refreshing from the gaming genre, then by all means, give the show a shot and see how you like it. So anyway, that's going to be it for today guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. As always, thanks for watching, and if you want to see more of this type of anime content, then you already know what to do. So until next time, ciao!